So the controversy with exam leaks is continuing and I don't want to predict what's going to happen with the IB investigation or the Cambridge investigation into the exams, but I do want to answer one question in this video that has come up a few times now in the comments on my previous videos. And do I think that the exams will actually have to be reset? Now, the best way of answering this question is both taking a mathematical approach and also the human social side of it. And if we go back in history to an exam in 2017, so this was an Edexcel A-level maths paper, you can see that the exam was not reset, but there were certainly prosecutions to a very, very small minority of people that had access to that Edexcel A-level maths paper. And if you go back in history in general, resitting generally doesn't happen. Now, let's go through maybe some of the reasons why. The first part is the social and psychological aspect, which is if you have just sat the exams, you've had lots of exams to go through, it's quite difficult to get yourself back in that mindset to reset. And it's totally unfair. You've worked really, really hard for those exams, then just to be asked to reset and go through that again. So from a mental health perspective, um, it's not the most ideal solution and it should really be used in a drastic case. I want to show you some mathematics behind this where I think the mathematics also points in the direction that resets would perhaps not be the best solution. Okay, so let's look at a situation that's, again, completely hypothetical, but gives you an idea of exactly how any exam leaks would actually affect grey boundaries. So assume 48,000 non-leak students, so the exam was not leaked to them, are taking their IGCSE maths, just as an example here, and the mean average is 50%. So we try to keep all these numbers fairly simple. Now, 2,000 students, so that's 4% of the whole 50,000 cohort, they get the exam leak, and it has the effect of improving their score from 50% to 90 percent so we're assuming it's going to be a big boost maybe it doesn't give them exactly full marks but certainly improves their marks by 40 percent we can actually work out the new mean average uh, adding these extra 2,000 students in so i've done the calculation down below here we have 48,000 times 50 so that's the total amount uh, for the 48,000 students and then we have the 2,000 students getting 90 and if we divide by the new total, which is 50,000, you'll notice the new mean here is at 51.6. So even assuming 4%, which is quite a big number, get that exam leak, it only has a 1.6% increase on the actual percentage average. And if you think of that in terms of total marks, now we're thinking only one paper is leaked, but if we had two papers like paper two and paper four together, bring those marks together where only one exam is leaked, you can actually probably have a less significant effect here than say for just one exam. So it doesn't actually make too much difference to the gray boundaries. They may change slightly to take that into account. So what did you think about the effect that in a hypothetical situation where there is a leak for a small number of students, it doesn't really have that much of an impact on the grey thresholds? Were you surprised by that? Again, let me know in the comments below. And we'll watch, obviously, the investigations with Cambridge and IB with great interest. And we hope they come to the best solution for the students and for all the teachers that have been working with those students as well.